Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Bitch and Brainstorm podcast. I'm your host, Elaine Terso, and I'm here with Cameron Black of the Swiftly uh, Team app. And Cameron is a returning summit panelist. Cameron was part of our Elevate Your Customer Experience Summit back in May, and now is going to be joining us for the Elevate Your Customer Experience uh, summit on July 12th. So Cameron, for those that don't know you, will you tell everybody a little bit about who you are? Sure. Thank you, Elaine. Hello, guys. So my name is Cameron. I'm the CEO and founder of Swiftly. Swiftly is a 24-hour on-demand concierge app. We give you anything and anything that you require 24 hours a day. I'm also the founder and host of the Entree podcast. So if you ever want to come on the show, do let me know as well. Very cool. So one of the things I know that you do is provide that kind of concierge service, right? So, which is all focused on the customer experience. But the other thing I know is that you have a team um, that is helping you. And I'm wondering if you can speak to what that's like. How did you um, train your team to be focused on providing amazing customer experience? Excellent. So, you know, it goes back to one of the things I mentioned to you when we first met is um, everybody that I interviewed to join our team um, in this rendition, uh, it was important for us to understand that they were rowing the boat in the same direction. And I always go back to the British rowing team analogy as if anything that they did before they won, they asked themselves the question, would it make the boat go faster? So if you were to join our team or if you want to join our team, I'll ask you that question is, What impact and what change do you bring to help us get to the finish line quicker? Um, And what's most important is if you understand that we work together as a team and we play together and we win together, that's the first part of the pillar. The second part is, are you customer focused? And then the third part is, are you customer obsessed? So once you can become customer obsessed and actually put yourself in the shoes of the user, everything else uh, moves smoothly thereafter. So tell me about being customer obsessed. What does that mean to you and how have you integrated that into your business? I mean, concierge, we all use concierge services in hotels or um, within our uh, booking.com apps or whatever it be. And we all know what it's like when you're going to check in, let's use an example as a hotel, and they can't find your reservation or they've given you a room right at the back or by the front of the lift and everybody keeps banging their luggage on your door. Right. Now, ordinarily the hotels some of them will tell you well we can't do anything about it um we're very sorry we're fully booked um etc you know there's no discount provided to you or whatever it be right um no compensation no way to make you feel welcome or worthy at all well what we do here within our business is we provide a service where we go from ordering your groceries for you to helping you get tickets to um, to an event. Now, if your grocery groceries arrive and you're not happy with those pears or those lemons, that's fine. Keep them. We'll bring you new ones. Tell us which ones you want. You know whether you want uh, whether you want um, ripe or unripened. You, you know. So we we really when I talk about being customer obsessed, it's about putting you as the um, as myself as a founder in that customer's shoes me um, or the team putting themselves in the user's shoes. What do, what would we want if we were that individual? Because you get what you pay for and nobody wants to pay for, you know, sour lemons as they say. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. So um, one of the things that I love about, you know, what you're doing is that you are a world traveler, right? And so you're in London and then you're in Arizona and then you're here and you're there. How are you keeping all of all of the shit together? Like for real, like how are you managing all of that in your business? It it it, it, it is um, back to the beginning again. Is once you realize you're all rubbing in the same direction, you know, internally, right? Mm-hmm. There's the levels of trust within the team. Everybody knows where they need to be. You know, just like the football team or the rowing team. Um, and so, if I'm out for sixteen hours. 
um, nothing's going to fall apart. But at the same time, we have a standard and the standard is that expectation. When Elaine picks up the phone and calls me, she knows exactly what she's going to get. If I'm not available, they know exactly what Elaine needs and exactly what should be delivered. And that's what our service is all about. And that's what customer experience is all about. You know, and so when I get on the plane, and I give you a great example, um, I flew into Phoenix um, uh, three weeks ago and the bed was broken. Um, oh. They did, Yeah. Problems. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's, there's no bed on the plane, right? But for me, that wasn't an issue. Um, they offered to re manually recline it and unrecline it. Um, they didn't have to do that. I was quite happy to do it myself. But it was a good experience because I had managed to catch, you know, you know, sleep and then <laughs> get off the plane and 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 get on with the, get on with the day. That is an experience. Had I got on a plane, they said, well, sir, your bed's broken. You can't even recline it. And you've got to sit on this plane for 12, 13 hours. Mm. Uh, sorry, that's a problem, right? Yeah. So you yeah. always got to understand that we're in the service industry, no matter what you do, whether you're police, whether you're a lawyer, whether you're medical, whether you do, um, you know, food, fast food. So you have to always understand that treat people as you want to be treated, but yeah. also that extra mile. and when we started swiftly here in England, the reason why we ramped up so quickly was we literally did what the customer wanted to do, even if it meant bending over backwards just to get it done, right? Yeah. Yeah. 3 a.m. mornings to 4 a.m. mornings, whatever you need. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's what we've built our business on, just being obsessed with the customer, making sure Elaine's happy, making sure that all her errands are done, making sure we remember her birthday, making sure we know that she likes, you know, uh, cheese in her eggs if we order it, making sure that we know when she's coming home. So we may we might just send you a note, a card just to say, hey, hope you had a wonderful day. Don't forget about us. That experience is like, oh, that's a great company. Oh, yeah. they value mm -hmm. their customers and then rewarding you with other kickbacks as well whether it be credits whether it be experiences whether you're in another country and we give you a recommendation or a, a free guided tour I mean you was in Paris recently yeah. uh, we didn't catch up with you but next time we will but just these like, small things here yeah. speak so much more volumes especially when you're a small business mm -hmm. um, because you need those recommendations and referrals to help you get to the next level Absolutely. I loved what you said. It like it doesn't matter what industry you're in. If you are having a human interaction with another person, you literally can make or break that interaction, right? Just by your tone, your attitude, whatever. And I think we forget sometimes that without clients and customers and whether they're a patient, whether they're whatever, yeah. You would not have a job if it wasn't for them, right? right. It all right. intertwines together. And we, I think sometimes we forget that other people have bad days. Other people are going through some stuff. And sometimes our, our bad attitude is a reflection of maybe what's going on at home. Right. And so I'm wondering if you have any guidance or suggestion of what do you do when you may not be on the on the receiving end of a pleasant customer experience. You've got to emphasize. You really have to emphasize. You really got to kind of understand where they're coming from. As you said, they could be having a bad day, a real bad day, and mm -hmm. they just need to get that out, right? And once they've got that out, you can then go back in and, you know, in, in sales, we call it the reclose, right? So um, they've said what they wanted to say. They've ranted as much as they can. Okay, that's great. But thank you very much. This is how we can do it for you or turn and offer them options. Make them feel that you are trying to help every step of the way. It's so important. And I'll tell you, I, I went to rent a car a few months ago at Avis. I walked in and um, Avis Preferred was close. I walked into the desk and there was a couple. They had a, a baby. And they said, we've been sat here for four hours and our baby hasn't eaten and our car's not ready. Meanwhile, I bought my car 15 minutes ago and I'm picking it up and I'm thinking, what on earth is going on here, right? Yeah. 15 yeah. minutes versus four hours. How's that? Like their car's yeah. not ready, but mine, mine is. Yeah. Uh, what sort of privilege do I have versus a couple with a baby, you know, in a, in a carry cot? Uh, but then the, the husband continued to sort of like rant and just give it, you know, all of the verbiage and 
I sat at, I stood at the desk and I watched and I said, well, hey, you know, after they had left, I said, it's really easy. All you got to do is just listen and ask them exactly what they want. If it meant them having to go home and then you delivering the car to them, that's fine. They don't need to be there for four hours. And I'm not trying to ba uh, badmouth Avis by the way, by saying this, but it's actually a true experience which was witness is if that was us, we'll tell you to go away and we'll bring it to you, right? Because that's the level of service. That's the customer obsession. That's the customer experience. Mm -hmm. So now they leave their location and they go back home to their hometown and be like, that experience there was awful. We'll never use this service again. Right. And really want to avoid that. You know, good feed, bad feedback sometimes is good. But mm -hmm. when you have those experiences there, nine times out of 10, a customer like myself who consistent travels, I might read that review and be like, well, if they can do that to them, they could do that to anybody. Right. You lose, you lose good business. Yeah. So you mentioned something that I'm I'm so glad you brought up is, you know, when you can get that constructive or negative feedback, how what do you do with that in order to um realize, have the awareness that you may need to make a change in how you run your business? If you have the opportunity, talk to your customer meet with your customer, sit with them, get that feedback, ask them exactly what they feel you guys could have done better, you know, what you should do better. Mm -hmm. um, and really take that back to your team if you have a bigger team uh, and really try and implement as much of that as possible because mm -hmm. ultimately we don't have a business unless we have these customers. They are our business, yes. period. So yeah. if the customer wants, you know, cheese on their eggs, if you order cheese on their eggs, or they want you to pick up their dry cleaning at 4 a.m. instead of 5 a.m. That's what's going to happen because it means them catching their flight or not. Um, experiences uh, is always what brings people back. And that's what we must always understand. And just be obsessed with our customer and don't feel like, well, hmm, they feel they're in they act or behave or feel entitled. We're always going to get that sometimes, you know, yeah. you're be having a bad day. You might be and give off bad energy. But to be honest, in business, nothing is personal. It's a straight right. transaction and it's all about experiences all the way. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I am so glad to have you back um, again as a panelist on our summit. Love having you. You always great bring such a great perspective to, um, to it. And so thank you so much for coming and sharing and giving us a little taste test of what we can expect um, at the Elevate Your Customer Experience Summit on July 12th. So thank you, Cameron, for stopping by and chatting with me today. Thank you, Elaine. I'm excited. Thanks for having me. All right. See you guys later.